was born in Lagos on 7th May 1970 and had his primary education at the Adeumi Memorial Nursery and Primary School, Moshin. His secondary education at the prestigious Eko Boys High School, Moshin, before proceeding to the then Auguste Polytechnic, and now Moshin Daviola Polytechnic, for both his national OND and higher national HND diploma certificates. He also holds a degree from the National Open University of Nigeria, now and a postgraduate degree from the Lagos State University, or job. Lawal has an expert knowledge in public relations, advertising, and journalism, as he fully recognizes the human and emotional aspects of dealing with the various publics in the communication channels. He also possesses strong social skills that enable him to be a strong relationship builder with his various public relations publics colleagues and third party stakeholders. He is methodological and adopt public focus approaches to work that enables him to have a strong drive to see things through to fusion and competition. His major strength is implementing major tax with zero downtown and little or no supervision and was adjudged the best population officer for year 2019. He's an associate member of both Advertising Practitioners Council, APCOM, and the Nigerian Institute of Journalism, NIPR, and a member of the Nigerian Institute of Journalism, NUJ. He has, he has various experience working in many ministries, departments, and agencies of the Lagos State Government, including Ministry of Information and Strategy, Ministry of Health, Ministry of Women Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Establishment and Training, Pensions, Commerce, Industry and Tourism, Special Duties and Intergovernmental Relations, Works and Infrastructure, Health, Education and Agriculture and Agriculture. Others are Newton's Development Authority, Office of Head of Service, Public Service Office, and Office of the Special Advisor on Education, among others. He has an expert knowledge of the selling process and effective sales technique social media, that is Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Lawa, who is usually motivated in a target-driven environment, is an optimist whose disposition is I can do attitude to every set target. He communicates effectively, whether diagrammatically, verbally, and in written form. He has natural ability to mentor, develop, inspire and lead groups of people to achieve the set objectives. He's a friendly, approachable and inspiring professional that leads his team to example. Lawa is currently the general manager of the Lagos State O radio station that is Lagos Radio and Eco FM. He is happily married with beautiful children. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor and privilege of presenting to you Mr. Olajide Lawal is the Aka for this prestigious award. <laughs> award of Excellence is proudly presented to Mr. Olajide Isiak Lawa in recognition of your distinguished achievement as a media practitioner dated this 14th of December, 2024. Congratulations, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. AZ Adama is the current president of the Nigerian Guild of Editors and also the editor of Vanguard newspaper. He holds a master's in communications from Leicester University, United Kingdom. He also holds a master's. I also holds a higher national diploma in mass communication from Auguste Polytechnic. Now, Moshu Dabiola Polytechnic. Highly distinguished, Mr. Ize. Prior to, prior to his being elevated to the position of editor, he has recently served as a reporter. As a reporter, judicial editor, deputy news editor, Saturday editor, and deputy editor of the same Vanguard newspaper. Mr. Anaba is always simple. That's why this uh, bow is very short and 
He's always direct. <laughs> With the Johnny Walker. Center striker. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Naba, who was he was at um, at a time a member of the committee on the abolition of death penalty in Nigeria. He's also on the board of several non-governmental organizations in Nigeria. He is married, eh? Like this. Uh, he is married with he is married with children, not many children. He is married with children. And he has no child outside. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mr. Eze Anaba. <laughs> the 1992 set Amakog, I have the singular honor to present this award of excellence to the editor of editors, the President Nigerian Guild of Editors, our own Eze Okuko, Eze Anaba. Editor, Vanguard Newspapers. Congratulations, sir. The profile of Dr. Mrs. Abimbola Oye today, Dr. Abimbola Oye today embodies the essence of existentialism, where purpose is forged through passion and dedication. Her journey is a testament to the human spirit capacity for growth resilience and transformation. She is a story figure in Nigerian journalism, whose career is a masterclass in excellence, dedication, and transformative leadership. With an impressive journey that began over 26 years ago, she has not only witnessed the evolution of journalism in Nigeria, but has also been a powerful force shaping its course. Like the ancient Greek concept of Udo, I don't know this, Udomonia. Am I right? Like the ancient Greek concept of Udomonia, Dr. Yetude's life work exemplifies a state of being that flourishes True living, a life of virtue, excellence, and service to others. In the spirit of another grammar, Dell, in the spirit of Nietzsche, how do you pronounce that? Nietzsche, Nietzsche is the name. <laughs> in the spirit of one man's will, like that. Dr. Yetude's career is a masterclass in self-overcoming, where challenges are embraced as opportunities for growth and self-actualization. Her story is one passion and purpose. Her story is one of passion and purpose. Starting out as a news reporter and marketing executive at Dark Communications, Rapper from 1994, to 1997. Mrs. Oyetude's brilliance was immediately evident. She broke new ground by pioneering the Lagos Island and Apapa offices, a move that showcased her knack for strategy, resourcefulness, and her bold approach to media management. This early success was just a prelude to what would become a remarkable career. Our commitment to journalistic integrity and truth-seeking reflect the philosophical ideas of Alessia, unveiling and parishious, fearless speech. Fearless speech, where the pursuit of truth is a fundamental aspect of human existence. In 1998, she joined the Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, FRCN, where she would carve out a legacy of excellence. As a news commentary writer, business reporter, stroke editor, and later as a controller, stroke head of business desk, Mrs. Oyedude demonstrated her much versatility, versatility and deep understanding of the media landscape. Through her mentorship and leadership, Dr. Yetude has become a Socratic midwife, helping to birth new ideas and inspire the next generation of media practitioners. 
to strive for excellence. Her commitment to journalistic integrity and her keen editorial sense led to appointment as the general manager of Radio Nigeria Bronze FM in Benin City, Edo State, in 2016. In this role, she has transformed the station into a beacon of quality broadcasting, overseeing a talented team of 135 staff members and driving content that resonates with audiences across the region. Dr. Yetude's academic and professional credentials are as formidable as her career. She holds a master's degree in communication studies from the Lagos State University and a higher national diploma in mass communication from the Oguse Polytechnic, now Moshu Dabiola Polytechnic. A lifelong learner, she has honed her skills through rigorous training at esteemed institutions such as the FR, FRS, FRCN Training School, Lagos Business School, Tunia, and the City University of New York, where she specialized in digital journalism. Her intentional exposure is equally extensive. Her international exposure is equally extensive. With her presence felt at major global events like the World Bank, Shock IMF meetings, the sidelines of President Buhari's visit in Washington, D.C., also China, where she covered the sidelines of President Jonathan's visit, Tokyo, Canada, London, Liberia, Ghana, and key seminars and workshops worldwide. She's supposed to have a round of applause for that. A revered leader. Can I continue, please? A revered leader and advocate, Dr. Yetude has been a strong voice within the Nigerian Union of Journalists, NUJ. For my impactful tenure as chairman of the NUJ FRCN chapter at Chapel and secretary of the Lagos State Council, to her current role as a national trustee, she has championed the rights, safety, and welfare of journalists tirelessly, working to uplift the profession. She was also secretary credentials committee for 2018 delegates conference. Her role as vice president, West Africa, for the Journalist International for Migration, JI GFOM further solidifies her as a leader of thought and action on the global stage. Can I have water, please? Oh, God. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you, thank you. In a case for journalism welfareism, Dr. Oyetude fought for the way in allowances that federal and state-owned media workers are enjoying now. Please, journalists here and the editors here, you should clap for her for that. In the process of pursuing this, she had an accident in 2013. This did not deter her as a committed comrade. Comrade, sorry. Okay. This did not deter her as a committed comrade. She was a former national vice chairman of finance Correspondent Association of Nigeria, FICAN, a member of many other business associations. She is currently the director, coordinator, Nigeria Association of Women Entrepreneurs, Lagos State. In every role she has taken on, she has exemplified what it means to be a true professional, resilient, innovative, and committed to the pursuit of truth. Her dedication to press freedom, her advocacy for journalist safety, and her unrelenting drive to mentor the next generation of media practitioners are all reflections of her deep love for the profession. Her contributions have not gone unnoticed. In 2023, 
the Institute of Public Sector Management in the United Kingdom conferred upon her a doctoral award, a fitting tribute to a woman who has spent her life elevating the standards of journalism. That is how Dr. Abimbola came to be. Dr. Abimbola Yetude is more than a journalist. She's an institution, a visionary, an enduring symbol of what is possible when passion meets purpose in the pursuit of truth. Oh, yeah, today's remarkable journey as a multi award winning journalist is indeed a testament to the human spirit's capacity for growth, resilience, and transformation. She made history a few weeks ago when she was elected the first female deputy national president of AUJ. Tommy Rose, Tommy Rose, Tommy Rose. I hereby present to you Dr. Abimbola Oyetunde. On behalf of Association of Mass Combination Graduates 1992, I hereby present to you this award of excellence, Dr. Abimbola Abosede Oyetunde PhD in recognition of your distinguished achievement as a media practitioner. Congratulations. Since Dr. Who has chosen us to make a citation available, I'm going to make it freestyle. And that is to say the few things that I know about him. Well, our path crossed in the year 1990 when he came to Gopoli for HND. And I was quick to spot him as a very brilliant hard-working, witty guy. Because the task of producing Ogopoli Exquisite was handed over to our set then. And a maiden edition for that matter. Nothing to copy. So he was coming with worthy experience from Newswatch. I wasn't... I, I didn't have a magazine background. So I had the privilege of working with Dotun as the deputy editor of Ogopoli Exquisite while he was the editor. In the course of that particular exercise, I discovered many virtues of Dotun Oladipo. And I'm happy that those virtues have not only remained with him till today, they have actually manifested in the amiable personality that he today represents. Dotun um, from being a journalist, a reporter, a production person, and, and an analyst, a publisher, a coordinator of social schemes for people in the media, I can go on and on and on, and uh, I, would, I would want to mention specifically his, president, his premiership as GOPCO president. So, a person of his standing gives me nothing but joy and pride that Omo class me now, now my colleague. So, on behalf of Amacog 92, for what we have, I build the husband of one and only Ayaba, who, who is blessed with maximal understanding of tolerance of this naughty boy. And who's, who's I mean, the award today of this, of this naughty boy better described as someone okay. Eh? The original one for that matter. So, um, my pleasure on behalf of Amacognity 2 to present to Ola Dotun, Samson, Ola Diopo, Shamsidin. Hmm? This award in recognition of his achievement as a media practitioner. Congratulations. Um, hello, everybody. Can you listen to this citation of um, Mr. 
Oni Ademola Olorun ni Sola Adesina Oni Ademola Olorun ni Sola Adesina was born over say, 59 years ago in Okeapo Ekiti in the Kole local government area of Ekiti State to Mr. Phillips Oni Iye and Mrs. Comfort Bamitale Oni. From a very humble background, young Ademola attended Baptist Primary School, Okeako, where he graduated in 1978 and proceeded to Ansarudin High School, Ikole Ekiti, the same year. Ademola worked as a clerk at the Federal Polytechnic in Larogu State between February 1984 and October 1986. He was able to continue his search for higher education at the Federal Polytechnic Bida, Niger State, in 1986, where he spent the next two years studying mass communication. The young man returned to the Federal Polytechnic Hiraro to work as an executive officer in 1988. As a result of an obvious reason, Ademola spent two years sabbatical to muster enough war chest to be able to step up for his higher national diploma in mass communication. Though his plan to put together enough resources for this project didn't materialize, he still proceeded to the, to the then Ogun State Polytechnic, now Moshud Abeola Polytechnic Abe Okuta, in 1990-1991 academic session. Most of his colleagues in school in Abe Okuta then, who are by the grace of God here today at this party, taught Adam Ola's invest involvement in commercial photography oh, yeah. on the campus and, and off the campus as well was just a passion. Unknown to most of them, except someone like Dotu Olajipo, his comrade in campus photography, <laughs> the seemingly aggressive passion was his only means of survival to see himself through school and take care of his younger sister who was only living with him while he was a student in Abe Okuta. After graduation in 1992, Ademola observed his nat National Youth Service Corps at the now defunct Oshobo Steel Rolling Mill. Oshobo Oshun State. <laughs> Between 1993 and 2003, Ademola ventured into photography, video recording, hall decoration, and in between, as registrar of the Rufus Giver Polytechnic, Lagos Satellite Campus. Lagos Satellite Campus Town, Lagos. In January 2003, he joined Punch Nigeria Limited as a photojournalist a week after his court wedding in March 2004. He was converted to a correspondent without applying for conversion. <laughs> Coincidentally, it was when he had planned to exit the organization for other challenges. He served as the Ogun State Bureau correspondent of the punch between December 2007 and September 2010. He also took advantage of his tenure in Abe Okuta to earn his master in communication arts at the University of Ibadan, which he started in 2009. 2009. Ademola got double promotion in September 2010 to become the features editor of Saturday Punch and got promoted again six months after when he became news editor of The Punch in March 2011. He was to serve as the online editor and the lead writer of The Punch between 2013 and 2018 when he was promoted editor, Sunday Punch, in January 2018. Ademola was again promoted editor The Punch in July 2019 in circumstances that could only have been orchestrated by God in 2022. He was promoted the general manager, digital and publications, Punch Nigeria Limited, where he supervises the operations of the print and digital platforms of the newspaper organization till date. 
Dory is tenor as the editor, The Punch. Ademola won the Editor of the Year Award of both the Diamond Award for Media Excellence Day and Nigeria, Me Nigeria Media Merit Award between 2019 and 2022. Ademola got married to his beautiful Olori, Omobalande Ayodeji. In 2003, the marriage is blessed with two powerful boys. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mr. Oni Ademola. My name is Kunle Adeshino. I'm the chairman of our Association of Mass Communication Students, 1992 sets. Wow. And my name is Bambo Gumbono. I'm the Social Secretary of Amacon 92. My name is Ezi Anapa, editor of Vanguard, president of the Guild. And I take it you are a journalist. Yes, I work with the Lagos State Government. I'm a director of public affairs in the state. Uh, I'm presently attached to the Ministry of the Environment and Water Resources. Okay, so how has your journey with journalism been, especially in Nigeria? Well, from uh, our graduation, we graduated in 1992, served in 1993, and I started, I, I had some experience in the private sector before I joined the state government in 1999. And since then, I've been an active member of Nigerian Union of Journalists as well as Nigerian Institute of Public Relations. And we've tried our best in our own little corners to uphold the ethics of the profession, which is about professionalism. And, you know, we have tried in our own little corner to carve a niche to be able to be recognized as one of those who promotes the ethics of the profession. Oh, well, I'm into private business now. I talk for a living. I MC events. I do the traditional wedding compare. I'm still in the business of talking anyway, so I'm still a journalist. <laughs> How has that been? Oh, it's been fun. When I'm working, I'm having, I'm having fun. So how long have you been in journalism? All my life. Wow. Well, I'm, uh, close, let me say, close to 40 years. And how do you, would you say the journey has been? Up and down, learning experience, beautiful. I'm a lifelong learner, and uh, it's been a learning experience and uh, enjoyable. Do you really think there's free press in Nigeria? Well, it's very relative, you understand. It depends on the side of the divide that you, de you belong to. As a government employee, I see myself as a propagandist. If you say it, I, I can't see anything bad exactly. in government policies, you understand. And I'll tell you that my paycheck comes from propagating government policies and uh, pronouncements, whatever. So, ordinarily, I will tell you that, ah, there is free press in Nigeria, but when you look at it, to some extent too, you agree that there could be rooms for improvement to the way it is practiced because we have seen instances that um, the way dissenting views are treated, it leaves much to be desired. How do you think journalism is being uh, portrayed in Nigeria? Um, journalism has always been a very respectable profession in Nigeria, but with the advent of online bloggers, yeah. online news reporters, online, I don't know what to call them. We have so many on facts, on fact stories, yes. you know, quote and unquote, on fact story, trending as real fact. So it's difficult to know what the real truth is, what is what one can ban. Then the fake news tend to fly so much than the real news. So it's really a challenge. But journalism in Nigeria is something I love. It's beautiful because I have so many of them surrounding me. I mean, I'm even in the midst of everything journalism. So 
It's good if only you can deal with the real and the fake journalists. So how do you think we can do that? What do you think are the remedies for that? Wow. My own remedy, personally, <laughs> is if only some people are arrested. Arrested? <laughs> because the thing is, we cannot buy on, um, online reporting. We cannot ban bloggers. I, I, I want to believe, for now, we really don't have... I, I don't know what measure can be taken to cut them. If only we can cut them, then we'll have the facts from the real and the suggested or the make believe. you know. It's so difficult. When you see the AI and a, a report that is being doctored, you believe it, you, you go to town with it, you're already feeling depressed about some things. You think the, the, the worst of the government, even for an individual, you think the worst of them. Not knowing that what you are seeing has been doctored. But if only those things can be caught, then we have a bright future. You know, the world is just at the feet of journalists. Yeah. They can make or mar a country. That's the power they have. And that is something to be respected by all. Yeah. So what would you say it takes to be a good journalist? You have to be dedicated. You have to have passion for the job. So that the slightest setback do not put you off. You have to read. Because you have to have a good understanding of your business. Of Because the act of journalism, as we know, is to educate, to inform, and to entertain. And these days, they say increasingly to set agenda. You have to be educated. You have to be dedicated. And again, you have to be... Educate, ed, um, dedication also comes with reading. Yeah. Understanding site, understand the economy, understanding your environment. So what would you say it takes to be a good journalist? Like I tell people, it's only when you die that you stop learning. The only way to be a good journalist is to continue to improve. And you know, the greatest room for improvement in the world is about improving. Keep improving yourself. There is no finish line to excellence. If you think today you add the best, don't rest on your hours. Keep striving, keep pushing forward. That is the only way. So do you think AI is an advantage or a disadvantage to journalism? You see, if I must offer you my opinion, it's a disadvantage. It will make our people lazy. Exactly. At the touch of a button, all that you have to consult your library or whatever, no, it's there. Research. Research. No research. For you. Yeah. So at times, I keep wondering that in the years to come, Many jobs will be lost True. because AI will have filled those gaps. So I don't see it as a blessing, honestly. Some of us might see it as a as a blessing, but at the end of the day, we will have cause to regret. As far as I'm concerned, it's a disadvantage. How so? A disadvantage to the to to the extreme. I don't know. When I was growing up, it used to be said that the way you sit in a picture is the way you will find yourself exactly. tomorrow. But these days, I can be sitting here, and tomorrow you see me dancing. How <laughs> absurd! You can see me lying on a bed while I'm still sitting. I'm rather exactly. than that. So anybody can be put into trouble with that. Sure. So for that, I don't like AI. I really don't. <laughs> for pictures, for all of that, yes. But the power of make believe is so high. And it's life threatening. Yeah. It has disturbed marriages, it has broken homes, it has affected a lot of people negatively. As far as I'm concerned, personally, the hills passes the advantage. I really don't like it. People see AI as a talent. I see it as an opportunity. AI gives us an opportunity and makes the job easier for us. For instance, as president of the guild, instead of me to sit down, I'm invited to so many places and say that we are expected to deliver speeches. But AI helps me. What is important is that AI should not make you lazy. AI should make your life easier. So instead of being 
an encumbrance, I see AI as a helper, as a tool to develop our craft. What are your plans for Christmas? Apart from the church festivities during the Christmas, uh, Christmas Boxing Day, go out with my family, you know, recreational sports, watch movies, have time out with some of our friends, and rest. Because I work with the state government, as I said, and I also anchor state events. So, okay. for example, most of December is lined up for me for state functions. But I have to find time to rest. So in that's between. very important. <laughs> oh, Christmas, as far as I'm concerned, is a time to forget my sorrow and live in the moment. Each and every one have, we have different challenges. But in the switch of the season, mingle with friends, stay happy, be joyful, Keep faith because God is faithful still, yeah. despite all. Make yourself happy. And the world will come to an end at any moment, as the Bible has professed. But I live for the moment and I like to be among happy people. And because Christmas is the season of love, I'm in love. Christmas. Well, I don't want to bust a bubble. I don't have to celebrate Christmas. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah, because of my belief. Oh. So, I don't do Christmas. Any New Year resolutions? Ah. Well, maybe to be a good boy. <laughs> are you saying you are good? How do you know you are good? I don't want to judge myself. <laughs> but, you know, like I said, there is no finish line to excellence. When you think, wait yourself, I've scored 78. Next year, I want to score 90. So, I'm striving to But how to are you improve. waiting yourself? You know that as an adult, there are some things you know are bad. When you do it as an adult, you don't need someone to tell you that what you've done is bad. You call yourself a bad dude. Some of it. So yeah. when you say, okay, some of these things I don't want to indulge in them anymore. I want to improve. Those are my new year resolutions. For the new year. Any resolutions for the new year? I stopped doing that some 20 years ago. I just prayed and went towards a resolution. Resolution, resolution. So drink more water. <laughs> okay, that's in a good morning. That's actually so a drink more water. I'm on 1.5 liter. If I can do 3.5, that will be fine. And be a better person. Yes, my resolution is to work harder, to set goals, to be a better human being, a better journalist, and be more responsible and responsive responsible to society to be a better journalist, a better father, a better friend, just a better, a better version of me. Thank you so much for talking to me. Guess is messy, you my dear. Hey, 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 h